And for more of a scientific perspective, H. Michael Mogul is a meteorologist with over 40 years of experience, nearly 30 of them with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He's also worked as a forecaster, researcher and severe storm program manager. He joins us now from Florida. Thank you for your time today, Michael. Uh, now, snowstorm Jonas is the largest on record for many states. Talk us through the meteorology. Why is Jonas so strong? Well, in terms of the central pressure of the storm, it wasn't the most intense storm. In terms of the area affected um, and the circulation of the storm, it was huge. Um, it extended all the way from uh, southern New England all the way down to Florida. I mean, I'm hundreds and hundreds of miles away from where the heavy snow fell, and we had winds of 50 miles an hour or more all the way down here in South Florida. So it was a big storm um, in terms of aerial extent, but it wasn't necessarily a very deep storm. Um, the biggest thing is, is that there was a heavy snow band and that heavy snow band set up right across the population centers from Washington through New York. Okay, and how common are storms like this? And can, is it fair to say climate change is at play here? And should we expect more storms of this, of this scale if that's the case? Well, I'm gonna go emphatically say that climate change is not at work here. Um, I think it's pretty well um, stated by a lot of people, both the climate change uh, deniers and the climate change protagonists, that you can't base a single storm uh, on climate change. I will tell you that I have gone back and looked at the records for the Northeast Snowfall Impact Scale, which is a measure of both aerial extent of snowstorms and population affected. It was developed by uh, some scientists at the National Centers for Environmental Prediction in Washington, D.C. And during the last 60 years, that's from the mid-1950s through the storm yesterday, there have been 58 what they would call notable or more intense snowstorms in the Northeast Corridor based on that scale. That is an average of one a year. Right, okay. And has, has Jonas reached his peak? Is there more to come or what, what is the forecast for the next few days? Well, uh, the storm is moving out to sea, so it will affect ships and transportation over the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but the storm is uh, effectively over for the United States per se. Uh, there will be a gradual warm up that will lead to uh, snow melt. Um, it does not appear at this time that the snow melt is going to be excessive and happen very quickly. So probably uh, storm drains and sewers and some streets may get flooded, but probably the worst of the flooding, at least for right now, uh, is over for the whole area affected. If there is a big warm up where the temperatures rise, uh, let's see if I can do this in Celsius for you. If they rise uh, above 10 or 15 degrees Celsius very, very quickly, then or there's heavy rain, then there'll be much more runoff and that will create flood problems. But that's not in the, uh, the forecast at this stage of the game. Oh, I appreciate that metric conversion there. H. Michael Mogul, thanks very much for your time.